Hey guys, so I want to talk about the 1995 movie Kids, but before I get into that, I just kind of want to just say something, maybe a little bit of a warning. I know that I have some people who watch videos from my channel who are under the age of 18, and despite the movie being called Kids, it's not a kids movie. Um, so if you watch this, and honestly, I think if you're under the age of 16, you probably shouldn't watch it, but... If you do watch it, and I know by me saying you shouldn't watch it, you probably want to watch it more. If you have an adult or someone in your life that you that you trust that you can have honest, open conversations with, then maybe be ready to have those conversations after you watch the movie. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, I was, I think, 17 when I watched the movie, so I really don't have much room to talk regarding that. So now that I got that out of the way, uh, I want to, uh, I'm going to pull out my trusty notebook here and I'm going to see here. I want to read two of the uh, plot, I guess, kind of plot synopsis from kids. I literally have like a composition notebook. So two of the plot synopsis, and I think this is interesting. So Wikipedia, how did they, you know, they're, they, they describe the movie. Kids is a 1995 American coming of age drama. Film and directed by Larry Clark in his directorial debut and written by Harmony Corinne in his screenwriting debut. There you go. Now this one's good. IMDb. A day in the life of teens as they travel around New York City, skating, drinking, smoking, and deflowering virgins. And guess what? Both of those things are true. So this movie doesn't really have much of a plot. It really is just a 24-hour period. There is an inciting incident that occurs about maybe a quarter of the movie, a quarter uh, through the movie, and it it's you're kind of seeing these different perspectives, and one character is trying to find another character, but basically the it's I'm not going to get I'm, I know a lot of times when I often when I say I'm not going to get in the plot, then I basically talk about the entire movie. I'm not going to do it with this one, but this uh, to call it the coming of age movie. Most coming of age movies, when I think of them, there's like a character arc, there's growth. And this one is just, there is really no growth. There is no character arc. If anything, it's very nihilistic. And the end is just bleak. And that's, that's it. That's so it, technically, I guess it's a coming of age story because it is these teenagers and they're, you know, on the cusp of adulthood. But it is, uh, most coming of age stories, I think of them as having like maybe a, a, a a glimpse of hopefulness and a new tomorrow. This one is just not at all. Um, so to kind of talk about the production a little bit. Um, so you watch it. There's going to be some people you actually recognize in it. Uh, it's Rosario Dawson. It's the first movie I think she was in. I'm going to butcher her name. Chloe Sevigny, who actually I, I do like her. I actually like Rosario Dawson in many ways. But Chloe Sevigny is the first movie she's in. Um Let's see here. Leo Fitzpatrick, who you may recognize from other things, and, and Justin Pierce. So those are your two main leads, actually, Leo Fitzpatrick and Justin Pierce. Justin Pierce, unfortunately, unalived himself a few years back. If you see him, you probably recognize him from being in the second Friday movie. I think it was uh, next Friday. I think he plays Flea, which was a funny movie, and he's a funny character. But unfortunately, you know, he's no longer he's no longer with us, I guess I'll say that. Um, so to talk about the director, it is a, looking at it now, something that I see now that I didn't see at the time, it is a beautifully shot film. Uh, I don't know what type of film it used. I, I looked a little bit, but I didn't look that hard. It's not a very high grade film. It feels almost like a documentary. So it's, it, it has a documentary film, uh, feel the way the, the camera's positioned, the type of film that's used. I think it is shot on film. I don't think it was shot digitally, especially in 1995. I'm pretty sure it was shot on film I and mean, i know they had digital cameras then but it looks like it was film um hey guys so after making this video i went back and looked at scenes from the movie and looking at it again if i had to guess it was probably actually filmed with digital with a digital camera i know this isn't a big deal but i tried to find what type of camera was used and i couldn't but it's probably a digital camera and looking at other films that use digi digital camera at the time and the quality and what it looked like, it was more than likely it was digital. So, yeah, I couldn't find exactly what camera it was. And, you know, I didn't look all that hard, but I couldn't find it. But, yeah, I just wanted to make that correction what I think it is. Thank you. So to find out that Larry Clark had a, uh, a photography background is not surprising. Um, some of the choices, the lighting and everything, it seems like it's mostly natural lighting. But it is a, it is a beautiful film looking at it, like the actual looking at it. 
Um, the choice in some of the directing and and with the subject, it does feel a little exploitive at, time, at times, and especially considering how young the um, how young the characters are in the movie. And I want I almost want to say subjects, even though it's not a um, even though it's it's you know it's a scripted movie. You almost want to treat it like it's it's almost like feels like almost like a like a like a documentary, even though it isn't. So I shouldn't say subjects, but it does feel a little exploitive. And kind of seeing the uh, the movie that he made, I think he followed this movie up with Ken Park. Looking at these together, it does make me feel a little uncomfortable with how he treats young people in his movies. Like I said, it seems kind of exploitive and, and whatever. Hey guys, so a correction here. Uh, Larry Clark's follow-up to Kids actually came out in 1998. It was a movie called Another Day in Paradise based on a novel by a writer named Eddie Little. I've actually I've seen the movie. I've read the book. The movie's okay. The The book is it's better. I know everybody says the book is always you know better, but yeah, this time, I mean, there's changes made to the story for the movie, the characterization, and I think it kind of takes away from the story, so the book's better just go ahead and read it i mean the movie's worth watching anyway ken park came out in 2002 and he actually made um three movies between kids and ken park and ken park was his follow-up of working with harmony corinne again so i just wanted to correct that thank you um but besides that it is it is a beautifully shot film and the directing is really good and the directing like i said it feels naturalistic it really does seem like you're watching a documentary harmony corinne um, so maybe as far as the script goes and the dialogue, maybe that's that should credit for that should be given to Harmony Corinne. Like I said, the entire movie was scripted except for one bit at the end of the movie, and you watch it, it's kind of hard to believe that it's completely scripted. It does it does feel like these people are just um, they're you know they're just riffing that they're just having conversations. So you know like they're just improving, but apparently it isn't. Now, Harmony Korean, he went on to make, uh, to write and direct a number of other movies. I'll just say this about Carmen and Romeo. I'll say two things. Right after we watched this movie, um, his second movie, or his first directed movie, his directorial debut, Gummo, came out. And uh, my friend and I, who we'd watch kids together, we were excited to see Gummo. We watched that. We were really disappointed. I look back, I watched Gummo again. I have a, a, a higher opinion of it. But honestly, I think Harmony Korine has been, um, he's kind of overhyped. I think that he, you know, he's presented as this auteur and whatever. He was on David Letterman three times. Eventually, he was banned from going on Letterman. I'm not going to get into details of why that happened. But I think he's a weasel. And if you see why he was banned from David Letterman, you'll see why I think that. And I think he, he managed to convince a bunch of people, you know, it's almost like the, in my opinion, he convinced a bunch of people that he was much more brilliant than he is. And I think there's a lot of people who just said, dude, you're, you know, your, your movies are whack. And I would say they're whack, but they're whack. They're, they're not genius. But I almost feel like it's no one wanted to step in and be the person who looks stupid by saying that. His last two movies were Spring Breakers. I saw that one. It was, it was not bad. It's kind of too long and, and whatever and self-indulgent. And his last movie was Beach Bum with Matthew McConaughey. I never watched that, but honestly, if I watched it, I probably just, I mean, I'm guaranteed to like it to some extent because I just like Matthew McConaughey, but I never watched it. I think it was Matthew McConaughey and Snoop Dogg, but I never watched it. So anyway, uh, kids, that's kids. I don't really have much else to say about it. Um, like I said, if you watch it, I think there, you can get it in, um, in streaming. But if you watch it, just realize it's going to be a kind of a disturbing movie. It when it came out, it was NC or it was NC seventeen. There may be a rated version of it, but it there's a there's a very there's a scene that's very violent. But most of the NC NC seventeen comes from um, just the the drug use, the language, and this, there's some sex scenes in it that, considering how old the actors are, I. I'm not sure if the actors were over the age of 18. They certainly don't look that that way. At least two of them definitely don't look that old. So you're seeing these sex scenes that look a bit explicit considering how old the actors are. So that's why it's NC-17. So if you watch it, I'm telling you ahead of time, should you watch it? Um, well, you know, the closest thing I could compare it to, and this will be kind of sound weird, I saw one or two episodes of Euphoria, and... 
this will sound weird. Uh, euphoria is a it's 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 about depression and drug use and this whatever, but kids is like the unsexy version of that. And I know to refer to euphoria as sexy sounds weird, but when you look at euphoria and you look at kids, you realize just how stylized euphoria is, and how kids is like no no. This is how the thing that they're doing what it would actually look like if this were really happening. Um, you know, so uh, that's, uh, if that makes any sense. Anyway, thank you. I have no leg. I'm about to buy and get zooted beans with a thousand up to Yeah, yeah. Yo, but I also got to run home, too. Yeah, yeah. I have no leg. I have no leg. Bless you, I'll see you back.